What's going on guys and welcome back. In today's video, I wanna show you how to transfer messages between two SQS queues. Uh, so this is a very common scenario actually. Um, it happens to me personally all the time where you have messages in one queue, you wanna get them over to another, or you have a setup where you're using a DL queue, a dead letter queue on something like a Lambda function. And after a bunch of failures, there's all these messages sitting in the DL queue, you need to transfer it back to the main one. Uh, unfortunately, there's no easy way to do this in the AWS console. There's no button that says, you know, click this and transfer messages between this queue to this queue. I wish that existed. If anyone from AWS is listening, please add that. Everyone wants it. Um, so unfortunately, the way that we're gonna do this is kind of what I would consider a hack, but not really. We're still gonna do this only through the AWS console. There's gonna be absolutely no code. Uh, however, this method may not work for those of you that have a large, large quantity of messages. In the hundreds of thousands is the number I'm thinking of. I'm not saying it won't work at all. It's just kind of a slower method. It's probably more suitable for those of you with maybe thousands of messages. Um, but yeah, so the setup that we have here, um, so assume for a second we have queue number one and we have it as an event source for a Lambda function. And this Lambda function will pull and process messages in this queue. Uh, now, if there's an error case, say there's a null pointer exception, I don't know, say there's a, a problem with the way that you wrote the code or the data that's being passed in. If there's an error case, that message will get sent to a separate queue known as the dead letter queue. So after a while, this dead letter queue will grow and you'll have a handful or a couple thousand messages in there. So after you fix the problem in the Lambda function, maybe it's a code change that you need to make or something with the data. Um, now you have all these messages in this queue and you need to move them back into the event source queue so that they can be processed by the Lambda. There is a slightly more hacky way to do this where you can make the dead letter queue the source of the Lambda function, but please don't do that. It's actually going to cause more problems and it's not worth it. Uh, so the method is pretty straightforward and we're going to go to the console right now and I'll show you exactly how to do it. All right, so here we are in the console. So I have two queues set up. I have queue number one over here and queue number two, which is gonna act as my DL queue. So if we look at the messages available, we see that in my queue number two, we have 10 messages available. So this is my you know, pseudo DL queue in this case. And now we wanna move them back to queue number one. And if I go to you know queue actions, there's nothing here that says like transfer to queue or anything like that, right? So the way that we're gonna do this is kind of strange, uh, maybe a little bit counterintuitive. So let's walk through this. So we're gonna go to our DL queue, which has the messages that we want to transfer back to our original queue, okay? And we're gonna go to configure queue. And we're gonna use the dead letter queue settings portion of this. And we're gonna use the redrive policy. So you're gonna tick this button. Um, so this just tells you what the DL queue is. So you're gonna tick this button and you're gonna specify your queue number one, okay? and you're gonna set the maximum receives to one, okay? So the value can be between one and a thousand. Now what the maximum receives refers to is the maximum number of times this message can be acquired by a processor before it gets sent to the DLQ. So what effectively this is saying is that if anyone acquires a message in this queue, the queue number two, which is my DLQ, after they acquire it, if they don't delete it off of this DLQ, it'll be considered to be received once. And then if someone tries to receive it again, the second time, it'll be moved back into this queue, whatever you specify here as the dead letter queue. Okay, so you're gonna fill this out as I specified here, and you're gonna click on save changes. Okay, so that should do nothing initially. So what we have to do now is start pulling the queue. So you're gonna go to view and delete messages. And then this by default, I think is 10 messages for 30 seconds is the default here. You're gonna change this to 999, whatever the maximum value is, and queue for as long as you want. You're gonna start pull, you're gonna click on start pulling for messages, and you're gonna see all the messages here now. And we can see that the receive count is now set to one for each, right? So this in effect didn't do anything. If we close this and just click on refresh, we see the messages are still in flight actually. They haven't been processed. And now they're available again. So they were in flight because they were in a kind of transitory state while they could have been processed. But uh, after they get released, they go back into the original uh, messages available state. So now this obviously didn't do what we want, right? We didn't move messages back into queue number one. They're still in queue number two. So what you have to do is actually pull it the second time. So if you pull it the second time with the same settings, it's gonna automatically move them back. I didn't get any of them here now, right? I'm not seeing any of the messages. If I click on stop now and go close, and then click on refresh again, I can see like magic, 
all those messages are now in the original queue number one where they originally were. Uh, so that's how this works. Just make sure that after you're done, you go back into configure queue and undo what you just did, or else you're gonna have messages bouncing between your DLQ and your queue number one just infinitely. So make sure that you do delete this setting after you are finished. So if you enjoyed this video, I have many more on SQS and everything AWS, so be sure to check out my channel. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on next week's video. Thanks so much, folks, and I'll see you next time.